Hello, everyone. How are you? I'm just going to adjust the lighting just a little bit. I just never know until we get on screen how this is going to look. Welcome, welcome for live number five in the Invincible CEO studio. I'm so thrilled to be here. I'm glad that you're here. We have quite a bit of people in the waiting room. I see that you're here. So please say hello. Go over to the live chat. Say hello. Tell us who you are, where you're viewing from. And I am here to answer all of your manifestation questions. I'm so excited. I look forward to this live every week because we really unpack these deep questions you have about manifestation. We're going to do the same tonight. We've had a lot of questions submitted so that we can discuss them today. And that at any time during our chat here, you could put your questions in the chat. If there's something that you agree with, put put the feedback in there. I love getting the feedback of what it is that you're you're resonating with. What do you need more clarity? So that's the whole purpose of these Q and A's every Wednesday. And oh, hey, we have Kervin here. Hey, Kervin, where are you from? Let everyone know. The more we interact, the more I can get a really good position of where you are and how I can help you on the spot. Okay, so while we're waiting for everybody to join in and say hello in the chat, my name is Dee Dee Povernick. I am the Invincible CEO. I am the last most exciting manifestation coach you will never need. How exciting is that? I am a big kid at heart. Downing Tampa is in the house. I'm a big kid at heart. I, When you really get the gist of this manifestation thing, it's just one big playground. And I can't wait for you to get to that point where you stop taking life so seriously. So when I tell you I'm a kid and all I want to do is play and this manifestation thing is so much fun, I want to get you to that point so that you really can understand what I'm talking about. Because once the manifestation thing clicks within you, you don't take life so seriously because just like that, you can change whatever is going on. So we have a lot to cover today. A few things I do want to mention. Number one, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for everyone here helping grow the channel. We have exploded so quickly which is really great feedback. So thank you for viewing the videos, for liking the videos, for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for sharing the channel. I, I see all of that in our analytics that we get, and it just makes me so excited that the message is getting out there more and more and more. I also want to remind you that we do have a amazing private group. I'm moving it out of Facebook and into a private group on my website through my app. So if you look at the description links below, you're going to see all the links that you need if you want to sign up and join us in the group. Right now, the membership group is free. And if you get in while it's that, it'll stay that for you for the entire time that you're with us. So you want to get in now. That's going to change in the upcoming months. But right now, we want to get you in there and get you connected. Let's see. We have uh, Kat. Hey, Kat, how are you? And we have mic drop voice coaching. And I know that's Schroeder. So if you guys have listened to the um, drop of light meditation, Schroeder is our friend who created the music just for the Invincible CEO that you hear in that video. Uh, in addition to the Facebook group, I do have a free digital course that if you want to know how much fun this is and how much I really want to help you understand what foundational assumptions are, there's a link to sign up for the free course. In addition to that, there's a website. I just put up a new blog today. So if you go to www.theinvinciblesceo.com, you will find the blog there. And I think there's at least 40 different blogs on manifestation and different uh, types of spirituality. And also, I want to also have a big thank you to all of the wonderful people who have signed up for the one-off coaching. You can do one-and-done coaching. And we also have some new people in the three-month program. So thank you, thank you, thank you for signing up for those. Thank you for allowing me in whatever way, whatever form to be part of your journey. All right, that was quite a mouthful. So thank you guys for letting me know where you're at. Schroeder, let me know how you're doing. We, we, we've been working together since, gosh, four years now. So it's great to see that you are here. Now, I do have questions. You'll see me looking at my screen. I want to make sure that all the questions that were submitted ahead of time, that we get to them tonight. And again, in addition, at any time, you can put any questions in the chat. Now, one of the things in the uh, drop of light meditation, if you've listened to that, it's on the channel. I talk about Reiki, Reikiing your water. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am a trained interrogator and investigator, expert of the subconscious mind and profiler. I'm also a personal certified personal trainer and certified nutritionist, but I'm a Reiki 
ninth degree Reiki Grandmaster. So I don't do Reiki like regular Reiki masters do. It's like a whole new level. There's about, I think, 40 or 50 of us in the world. And one of the things that is very important to me is that to bring this energy work to you, that yes, it's wonderful if you get the Reiki attunement at the first level and the second level and become a master. But you right here, right now, can do what we do. And I'm going to teach you, I made a promise to one of the, the comments, I, I don't have the person's name, I think it was Nina, that asked, how do you Reiki the water, right? Because you're going to hear me say over and over and over again in the Invincible CEO, and I'm going to talk in ounces, but I will figure out what it is in liters. Um, you need a minimum of 80 ounces of water for your body just for daily regular functions. That doesn't count if you exercise or if you drink caffeine. So I always tell my clients to shoot for 80 ounces per day to a gallon. And if you work outside or you do uh, a lot of activity or hot yoga, then you would want to drink more than that. So we want to get the, the body hydrated because water is an energy conduit. We also want to get the body oxygenated. So you're going to hear me talk about deep breathing a whole lot. It's the foundation in the energetic mindset solution, and it should be the foundation for everything that you do, because when you are hydrated, and I don't know what the correlation is, but when I'm well hydrated and I'm well oxygenated, that means a lot of deep breathing. And the really nice thing about deep breathing is that when you're deep breathing, you can't think. When you're truly deep, deep breathing, you cannot think. It shuts that part of the mind down. So another great reason to see you hydrate it and oxygenate it, but you feel better about yourself, you automatically go to a higher vibrational feel and I don't know what it is. This is my personal experience. It can be different for other coaches out there. But when I'm well hydrated and well oxygenated, talk about flow, talk about manifestation. I can't say that enough. And as a ninth degree Reiki Grandmaster, those clients that would come to me for Reiki, the more hydrated and oxygenated they are, the quicker things happen for them also. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to center you. And we're going to do this real quick at the beginning of every live because we wanna let the rest of the world go. So I would hope that when we're on the li these lives together that you're uninterrupted, that you can get, whether you're sitting or you wanna lay down in a comfortable position, and we're gonna start the deep breathing. And as we did a couple lives ago, when, you, when I say to you deep breathe, I always say take in your first deep breath. And if you're the first time here, you'll get this. But if you've been here doing this quite a bit with us, you'll, you'll kind of catch on what I'm talking about. So if I ask you to take a deep breath in through your nose, hold it, and then slowly let it go out of your mouth like a, and I want you to make the noise. I don't want you to be embarrassed. Make the noise. There's a reason why we have you breathe that way. So now we're going to do three of these breaths. And when we're done, you're going to go snap, snap, snap. And I'm going to explain after we're done why we're doing it. So let's get it done first. But now I want you to become more aware of that air coming through your nose. I want you to feel it going down your throat until it lands in your chest cavity and you feel that expansion of your chest cavity when you hold the breath. And then when you go to breathe out and you're going at the very end, when you think you can't breathe out anymore, I want you to push it out like you're, you're emptying the last bit out of the toothpaste and squeezing that last bit out. So it's going to sound like... Like you're really squeezing that out there and then followed by an immediate next deep breath. So three times go at your own pace and we're going to do it together. Ready? Nice. Loosen the body. Shake it out a little bit before we start. And here we go. So why we do that and why we get so present is that the only thing that's important during those three breaths is it's putting you deeper and deeper and deeper in the now moment. And the deeper I can get you to go into the now moment, and I know it's kind of limited doing, doing a YouTube live, right? We can go a little bit deeper with, say, a Zoom 
But when I got you in person, when I really bring you into the now moment, all of this conceptual manifestation stuff, immediately it clicks. So if you have questions, you're going to know you're not deep enough into the now moment. And that's not to use to beat yourself up. That's just you are where you are. But the more that you can feel the breath coming in through the nose, down the throat, in the chest, you hear the noise as it's going out, we're, we're bringing the sensory effect to it. And this is what Neville Goddard is talking about when you go to do your passive imaginal acts, when you close your eyes and you want to give it as much of the five senses, real natural feeling. The reason why you can't do it so much in the beginning with your imaginal acts is because you're not present right now or the, the, the majority of your day, right? We have the, the mind, it's really not a split mind. We put it into categories so that we can understand it. So we have the subconscious mind and we have the conscious mind. And we're going to address in some of the questions that we got here uh, for this week about how to bring the two together. They're already together. We just kind of separate them to talk about them so you understand. But let's face it, you don't need to understand how the mind works in order for the mind to work. Because right now, can you tell me how gravity works? But yet it works for you. And it works all the time. And it works 24-7. So guys, come on. Keep those comments coming in. Let me hear where you're from. I see a whole bunch of you on. We're growing each week with these lives. And I really want you to get this understanding that manifestation is easy and fun. You've been doing it all your life. You did it when you were a newborn baby. It's just you were doing it unconsciously and subconsciously. And now what's different is we're bringing the conscious mind into play, but because the conscious mind in a way thinks it's been in charge, it wants to take over. And if you're getting too much in the mind of thinking, then you're in the wrong mind for manifestation. Because if you think of the subconscious mind, if you think of the sperm and egg, think of it this way. This is, you know, I'm the queen of analogies. So I'm going to get you as many analogies as I can. I'm going to move this down here, get it out of my way because... I can see myself on screen there. Okay. So I want you to think of the egg, how big the egg is. If you've ever seen the pictures where it's about to, it's going to get fertilized and all the sperm are around the outside and they're all trying to be the first one in, but you see the, the size of, of the, the, the egg, the egg is the subconscious mind. It's the bigger energy. And all it needs is one thought or one idea to fertilize it. And it's a seed. You hear Neville Goddard talk about planting a seed. If you plant, <clears throat> if you plant a rose seed, you expect a rose bush. If you plant an orange seed, you expect an orange tree. So the seed already has its fulfillment ready to be fulfilled. You now were subconsciously or unconsciously creating before. And now all the conscious mind is meant to be in this now moment is that one sperm that gets in and fertilizes the energy and then allow that seed to grow, grow and grow bigger. I see we have Florida in the house. I'm glad that you appreciate the analogies because if I can take what you already understand and I can take what you already know and you can connect the dots within yourself but one of the things you're going to hear me say over and over is whether it's a live or we have an in-person uh, retreat or you're going and watching the videos. This isn't about knowledge gathering. This is about taking something from each video and immediately putting it into action through experience because it's through experience that we can help you grow. And until you have your own experience, it's going to not seem enough real enough to you. Excuse me one sec. So I'm going to bring us back to the Reiki water in one minute. So what's really important in having these experiences is because then those experiences become your truth. And part of what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow your conscious mind. Like you should be blown, whoa, kind of thing, because I'm big on cognitive dissonance. Whenever we're getting to a point of cognitive dissonance, meaning one question comes in because reality and you and life itself and what's happening in the now moment is the story. It doesn't need a story, right? So if you get a, a check today in the mail, you don't need a story. The check is the story. The check in the mail is the story. But then we open up the check and say, where is this from? And we want to know the backstory. So we're really getting you in the now moment because the now moment doesn't need a story. It doesn't need a thought. It's just what's happening. And in that, if you have a question, which is cognitive dissonance, then you'll know you're at the precipice between two realities. 
and you'll have that choice to make of which reality you want to go to. So now grab your water, right? You, we did our deep breathing. And the reason why I have you do those three breaths and the three snaps is as a Reiki Grandmaster every morning, I set the energy and I send it out. And anyone who's open to receive it, all you have to do at any time is the three deep breaths followed by the three snaps. And I would say you could also follow it up with three more deep breaths. But if you noticed where you felt the energy in your body, where you did those three breaths, whenever you feel that energy within you, the energy is activated and you can take as much as you want. It automatically replenishes. But I'm not going to get too much into that now. We can do a whole live on that or I could do a whole video on that. But right now, how you Reiki your water. So as a Reiki Grandmaster, and we talk about the subconscious mind, communicates in symbols, it communicates in repetition, ceremony, and feels. So what we did, we did three snaps, we did repetition. We did a ceremony where we stopped and we did three deep breaths. And then we did feels because you felt how it felt in your body. That's a subconscious mind, what I call subconscious mind hat trick. When you bring all three of those and you are consciously aware that you are doing that, you are so present in the now moment. So now that the energy is activated within you, I'm going to have you take whatever water bottle, because I did put in the little comment. So if you haven't gotten a water bottle, hurry up, go get one. I'll talk a few more seconds for you to catch up. And what I'm going to have you do, and it could be a plastic bottle. It could be, a, it could be, you have, could have it in a glass. You could have it in a silver container or one of those metal containers. It doesn't matter what it's in. And what I like to do is I like to wrap my hands around, but you feel, you hold it however you feel comfortable because it's not about how I do it. It's about how you do it. And here's the thing when I'm bringing you to experience, it's not about copying my experience. And I never want you to believe a word I say until you bring yourself to the experience of having it. And even though our experiences may be similar, yours will be true to you and mine will be true to me. Okay. So we're going to hold this here and I want you to hold it, continue doing your deep breaths until you feel either the temperature of the body of the bottle change. It could get a little colder. It could get a little warmer, or you can feel the pulse in your palm because I have you activate it now as, as a Reiki master. doesn't matter where you are in the world. As you hold it, you'll start to feel your pulse beating against the bottle. Once that's activated, and sometimes it can be done in five seconds, and sometimes it might take 30 or a minute or however long it takes, the water is reiki Now, how this water will react in you, I would say take little sips of this because it'll either mellow you out or it'll have you bouncing off the walls, and it, it, it's different for each individual. So that, and you can tell it. So if it's where you're at, it's almost, you know, when we're done here, it's bedtime. Then as you're holding it, you're going to repeat three times, mellow, mellow, mellow now. Or maybe you're just starting your day and you need lots of energy and you will be, you can use whatever word you want. You could be peppy or energetic, whatever word you want to repeat it three times and then say now, because you're commanding your reality. And what I'm going to do in a future live is I'm going to show you, bring you to the experience. And I'll probably do this one on Zoom. I might do it as a, a, a pop-up group to show you how in the now moment you can change the taste and the texture of food by commanding your reality. You want to know instant manifestation. You So one of the things that I would suggest is I like to make my water sweeter, sweeter, sweeter now. And then when you go to drink it, it'll taste sweeter. And you can keep doing that over and over until you get the sweetness. Or maybe you want to have it a little bit bitter, like a lemon tasting. You can change your reality just like that. And when you can physically change it, just imagine what you're going to do. Okay, so we have, I uh, appreciate, yes, I can overthink. And I would love to attend that. So guys, I have so many things planned for this group. And I get so excited. And one of the things that I always try to do is not overwhelm you with offers and offers and offers and offers and offers. So I'm here for the marathon. I'm here for the long run. 
There's going to be in-person retreats. There's going to be online events. There's going to be so many fun things. And what I'm trying to find right now is the nice ebb and flow to not overwhelm you with too much information all at once, because it's, I, I will say this, I offer manifestation in a way that you might hear some similar things that other teachers offer, but I don't do it the same way. It's very, very, very unique here because I want you to pick it up. I want you to pick it up quickly and I want you to start using it in your life immediately. All right. So take little sips of the water until you feel how it resonates within you because we don't want you bouncing off the walls until 3 a.m. So the water is now Reiki-fied and that's to use it with the drop of light meditation. It's about a half hour long, the meditation. It's a wonderful, uh, yeah, thank you, Bridget. I'm definitely, definitely different. And I'm, I'm very, very, very down to earth. I've been where you're at. I know your frustrations. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, even sometimes with all that I know and all that I teach and, and the finish lines, I get people, uh, help them cross over because it's really all you. Just like as a personal trainer, I can take you in the gym, but I can't lift the weights for you. I still get caught in the mind traps. I still have those frustrated moments, but it doesn't last very long. At this, this point in the game, it's like, oh, that just happened. And I laugh at it. So no matter how adept you get in this, it's still, the more adept you get with manifestation, the more subtle the mind gets with pulling you back in sometimes. And it's fun when, when that happens. All right. So we have some questions to answer here. And I was trying to figure out how to offer them in a certain way where I can, I love looping stories together. So I never announce your name unless I've already asked you ahead of time for permission. So I think going forward, um, I'll have you put in your comments whether I can call you by name or not. So I won't do that tonight. And also as my clients, if you have stories that you want me to share, I will share them in any way that you allow me to do that. But I would always have your um, permission first. So if you want me to share without using your name or if you want me to share using your name, so I always respect your privacy, even though you put your questions up in the YouTube community, um, just because that's, I always treat you how I would want to be treated unless someone come and ask me for my permission. Oh, good. I, I thought it was you, Nina. And there you go. You got the Reiki fied water. So wonderful. And, and that's why I'm really looking forward to getting to know you. So I appreciate your comments over and over again and also being here. All right. So let's start here. And because some of them are a little bit similar. So we have any tips on how to go changing your appearance and bringing the conscious mind on board. And I'm going to, there was two questions, uh, two comments from this poster saying, could you please explain more about being delusional? Isn't it funny to ask a delusional person to explain how to be delusional? I love being delusional. The more delusional, the better. If I don't make at least one person roll their eyes at me during the day, I know I have not met my delusional quota. Okay. Um, going on with the question, how do you get the conscious mind to play along and do its job of providing evidence? And the reason why I'm asking is I have a bit of a struggle with my conscious mind and its logical suggestions. They seem to be playing on a loop and I'm improving um, and never have to apologize for re-asking a question. That's why we're here. Uh, let's see, mic drop, permission granted. Love how your brain works. It always blows my mind. Ha ha, delusional quote. Yeah. And Schroeder, I, I love that you're here. So thank you for, for being here. And that's what I love about the clients. You guys come and go as you need. And I just never know when you're going to show up. And I love when you do. So, all right. So to answer the question. Okay. So how I look at manifestation is this. And, and I've made this really simple. And I put up a short, I think it was yesterday where I talk about, I call my mind the echo chamber. And I really want to go in that because it's going to help answer these questions. The echo chamber, that's what it is. So just imagine if I went to a cave that you could go and experience your echo. I, the conscious me, the outer me would have to go, hello. And I would do it one time. And then I would expect the echo to go, hello, 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 until, and each time the echo bounce, it gets softer and softer and softer and softer. When I use my tuning forks, when I do Reiki, I hit the fork and it's really loud. And as the course that I'm using it, it gets softer and softer until you can't hear it when it's away from you, that you have to bring it to your ear. So when we're talking about the echo chamber mind, if I haven't spoken something out loud and I'm hearing something in my head, it's an echo. 
meaning that this version of me could have said it earlier in the day or a, a week ago or a month ago or 10 years ago. And somehow it's bouncing around in the echo chamber. But if I'm the one observing this, and this is so powerful, guys, if I'm observing the echo, I'm not the echo, right? If I'm as, if I'm looking out the window and I see a car drive by, I'm observing the car, I'm not the car. I don't identify myself with the car, even if it's my car being driven by. Do you get that? Tell me you get that. Put it in the comments. Didi, I got that. Because once you understand that anything that you can observe, whether it's outside of you or within you, you're bigger than it because you can't observe something that you're not bigger than. And when you start to realize that you as the observer, because the observer never has to think. And in one of my videos this week, we did an exercise, and this is so powerful, where I had you take your head and look from left to right, and then right to left. And when you do that observation, as the observer, you see everything that's here and you make note of it. And it's like really, really quick back and forth. And you take in the whole room. And even the subconscious is taking in what's behind you. But if we were to bring the conscious mind and say, okay, let's give the conscious mind a job, then when we do that same exercise and we're going from left to right, but you can only move as fast as your conscious mind can name things out loud. So if I'm sitting here and I'm going light switch, door, doorknob, trim, couch, pillow, wall, and you see how the first time when I was doing it subconsciously, it was real quick, real quick. But now if I only can move as fast as what I can name and categorize, but the sub the conscious mind's playing along because I gave it a job. I gave it a job. And this is why I say you can't get it wrong, but you can make it long. Because if I tell you to move your head from left to right and the subconscious is doing it, it already knows how to turn it. You're not giving it instructions how to turn. It knows what to do. And it happens like that. But the second we bring the conscious mind in and we have to name everything and it has to categorize and, and quantify and qualify and justify, all of a sudden that 10 to 15 second back and forth can turn into 15 minutes. It can turn into a half hour. Are you guys getting that? How powerful is that? Because we don't need the conscious mind to narrate what we can automatically do. So that's not its job. That's why right now you're not sitting here telling your heart to beat, heart to beat, heart beat again, beat again. Could you imagine if it was your, how many people would still be here if you had to consciously beat your heart or consciously digest your food? So those things that are in the subconscious mind's realm, let it do its job. It's not the conscious mind's job to regulate that. But what happens is that when things are just happening and now we're, we're observing, we're the observer of what's happening, it tells us what reality is rendering 24-7 because this is a dream and you were simultaneously experiencing and creating. You're always experiencing what's being created. And I know in the beginning, coming off of being a human in a human life, it's hard to wrap your mind around it, but it's not, your mind can never be wrapped around it. Because here's another concept to get to answer these questions that, that will help you, is we are moving through states of being. We are not one body that moves through space and time. We, if we took one minute and I were to film you for one minute, say taking your hands and during one minute, it takes you to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we break that film into 60 seconds. Every frame would have the hand moving. And when we move, when we make it go quick, it makes it look like there's a hand moving, but here's a state of being, and here's a state of being, and here's a state of being, and here's a state of being, being and there's still frames. And we're taking our consciousness from frame to frame to frame to frame. So when you hear me say the sitting you that is sitting down right now never stands. He or she has one job. They sit for all of eternity. And the standing you, the standing me is right next to me right here. But we can't see it. It's active and visible. 
it's it's a potentiality so that if I as the consciousness decide to start to stand up, then I start to fill all the frames until I stand. And the sitting me has to die temporarily for the standing me to be realized. And now the sitting me goes invisible because I've took my consciousness, think of it like a balloon. I suck the air out of the sitting me and I put it into the standing me. Does everybody get that? So all we're doing, I know, mind blown, I know, but this is a really good thing. This is a really good thing because each sentence you say or each idea that bounces around inside the echo chamber, that's what the mind is for now on, it's not you yet. You haven't identified with it yet. It's just like a car driving down the street. If you let it be, it'll be on its way. But at any time, you could go out to the street. Maybe it's a neighbor and you want to stop the car and talk with the neighbor. And in that moment, you're identifying with talking to the neighbor. So that, that saying, and you see those funny memes on, online that says they have one job. And of course, it shows how they screwed up the one job. Well, the sitting you is always sitting. Now, I'm going to have play with you. I'm going to have some fun. And I'm going to show you how I can bring you to a point of awareness. I can influence your awareness right here, right now. And then you can't be uninfluenced. What has to happen in order to be uninfluenced is your attention has to go elsewhere. So I want you, if you're sitting down, and if you're not sitting down, have a moment, sit down. And, and just, just sit there for a second and how present you are, right? You're present sitting down. But did you know that your butt is touching the chair? And did that, did that butt touching the chair, do you get, are you more aware of that now than you were maybe 30 seconds ago? Are you aware that your feet are touching the floor? And all of a sudden I took your attention and put your feet touching the floor. But now going back to your butt touching the chair, while we're talking about your butt touching the chair, I want you to become unaware of your butt touching the chair. Try to do that. You can't. But how I can get you to start to be unaware of your butt touching the chair is your feet are touching the floor. Let's focus on your feet touching the floor. Wiggle those feet around touching the floor and you slowly lose consciousness of your butt touching the chair, but you know it's there. So it's a you understood. And when P, when you're caught in a mind trap, and this is bringing it back to how do we get the conscious mind to play along, you got to give it something else to do. So if you've ever tripped before, if you've ever done magic mushrooms or LSD, you'll hear people who have had those trips talk about set and setting, that if you start to have a bad trip, you leave the room, you go outside, you go do something else. Well, every day is a trip, friends. You're on this mag magic mushroom rod trip. And what the most valuable currency you have is your attention and intention. And you're going to hear here, I love to, to play with words. And I'm glad I resonate with you that you understand it in a way you didn't grasp it before. And you get that you're not the car. Awesome. Yes, you got it. Good. Wonderful to see that. Okay. So now when you're starting to realize that you are the consciousness, you are the echo chamber, you are the place where th things can rise and fall, can come and go. Anything that can come and go is not you. And the awareness that is looking out of your eyes and the awareness that is hearing out of your ears and the awareness that tastes and touch and smell is the same awareness that looked out of your five-year-old eyes that heard with your five-year-old ears. Because there, that version of you, the one that is you know, sitting and, and playing with their favorite toy is still there sitting with playing their favorite toy. That's why we can go back into the memory of it. And it's like a, a freeze frame. And the moment that we put our attention on it, we bring it back to life. But we may not remember it exactly. And here's the mind-blowing thing. If I were to take you into your memory as an investigator, as an interrogator, you will only give me roughly about 30% recall. Now, we could probably hypnotize you and get a little bit more of the detail of the recall. But we're holding on to memories of this past that we believe that we've had. 30%. Could you imagine going in and buying a car and only leaving the dealership with 30% of a car? That would not be acceptable. 
So for you to stay attached to your old memories, because the moment that you choose something, all the other versions of you are created instantly. So if you go into Baskin Robbins ice cream and there's 31 flavors and you pick vanilla, then there's 30 other versions of you that pick all the other flavors. And then if you choose it in a dish, there's all the other versions of you that chose it in a cone, that chose it in a waffle cone, that chose it as a milkshake. Do you get the idea? So whatever you're making one choice, your consciousness makes all the choices. And that's why we can use Neville Goddard's revision to go back in and revise because you're not nailed to the one choice. And the memory that you have of it is only 30%. Is this not mind blowing what we're doing here? So when we go and say, how do we get the conscious mind on board? You are creating a character, just like I'm the sitting character right now. You've created a character that the conscious mind is not on board and it must act that way. But the moment that you chose a, a, a conscious mind that's not on board, in my echo chamber, when I'm brought to the uh, cognitive dissonance, when there's a question that has to be answered or a decision that has to be made, I always say, if I were in that situation and I say my conscious mind's not on board, I always say, give me the total opposite where the conscious mind is on board. And now I'm at the precipice as the creator of two realities. And I say, do I want to explore the conscious mind not on board or do I want to explore the conscious mind on board? And when I decide I wanted to, to follow the conscious mind on board, I may not, not, not quite know what that means yet in experience, but I know what it's not. Do you get that? So let me give you a, a concrete example. Um, okay, so let's say tonight that you go to bed, before you go to bed and you decide that you are going to assume that character that you wake up in the morning and that you're going to do a half hour of cardio. So you choose right here, right now. And I always say that nighttime DD and daytime early morning DD are not the same characters because morning DD is not thrilled sometimes what nighttime DD chooses. And that's when you start to realize that these characters within you is like these multiple personalities because the one making the choice tonight isn't the one making the choice when the time comes. So if I decide tonight that I'm going to be the DD that wakes up and does a half hour of cardio tomorrow, then I'm going to act as if, and I'm going to get the clothes out. I'm going to get the shoes ready. I'm going to make sure that I have everything lined up because what I'm doing is I'm setting up for the success of that version of me who might wake up and say, well, oh, I have to get all that stuff together. So I always try to make something ahead of time to show all of my versions committed because we're a team, right? The sitting me and the standing me are a team and all the versions of me in between. I am no longer a house divided within myself. So this is how I see reality. I wake up in the morning and I just got here. I'm the consciousness. And I go, I just got here. It's like uh, Frosty the Snowman, every time he puts the hat on, it gets blown off and he goes, happy birthday. I just got here and I know that I had all my predecessors and they, we each have 24 hours. So from when I wake up, maybe less than 24 until I go to bed, it's my job to move the character, this body around the game. Like, you know, think of a monopoly game and I'm rolling the dice and I get a 12 and I have to move 12 spots. So my job while I'm consciously aware is I take the baton from the me of yesterday and I wake up in the morning and everything that's here, I didn't have to go get. I just got here. So all the things that are here were from my predecessors for me to play with. And some of the things I will and some of the things that I won't. And I get all of the memories that they spend, they send forward and all the commitments that they made and all the decisions they made. But I finally got, I'm in the front of the line. I finally got, I've been waiting for this moment while all the other ones had their chance. Now it's my turn. How can I build on what they've done and take this character forward so that I could set up today to be the best foundation for tomorrow's version? And then when she gets here, she just got here. So for example, she'll take a look at this live and she'll decide what else can I do with it? 
but it's not my job. My job is to be here and do the live tonight so that she can have that in the morning. Does that make sense, guys? So you want to be a cooperative component for yourself. And I don't have to know right now what that version is going to be doing tomorrow. That's none of my business. As the main character right now, my business is right here, right now. And, and living as much of the now moment and feeling so present, knowing that what I'm doing here in this live, in this moment, is going to not only help those watching, but all the people that will watch later. And because all of them are me pushed out, I've created all of this and we're just moving the little character along the board each day. Is this helping? Let me know if this is helping you. So when you decide something that you're going to do something, when I decided to do this YouTube channel and I, it was going to be viral and I was going to have 100,000 subscribers within a year, how did that, how, how is that going to happen? I have no clue. I mean, I know I'm going to make some videos. I'm now going to do some lives. I know some of the things we're going to do. But what's my business is what's now. And because we can have a conscious mind that says this isn't working, I decided ahead of time that my conscious mind's job is to find the evidence of growth every day. And sometimes it might be subscribers and sometimes it's watch time hours and sometimes it's view duration and sometimes it's comments on the channel. Sometimes it's how many people shows up to a live. And if the, the conscious mind starts to complain and goes, we got less of this today. Well, uh, 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 I didn't hire you to find me less of. I hired you to find me evidence of more, find me evidence of growth. So here in changing your appearance and bringing your conscious mind on board, it would be like the CEO trying to convince somebody in one of the departments to do their job. It's not that you got to convince your mind to be on board. You just got to give it a job and give it a positive one because it's like a puppy dog. The conscious mind has a 15 to 30, se 30 second attention span and it wants to serve you. It really wants to serve you. But as you're shifting out of one reality to the other, it doesn't want a quick induction. It wants to it to be very natural for you. So I'm going to share with you um, because another one of the questions here is I was always looking for videos on health, had to ignore a bad diagnosis and physical suffering that been present for years. And I've been working on it since it showed up. And apparently I'm not aware of a belief I have. Don't go looking for beliefs that you don't know you have. That's another story we're making up. So don't go there. So I'm going to share two experiences with, with me that happened. And this is where, um, at the time, I could, I wouldn't explain it the way that I would explain it now that I'm the operant power, but I also commanded my reality. So one was um, what, after my son was born, he's 18 now and he, he was nursing and he was nurse. It was very early on, like two months. So all the time I have four other children. I think the oldest was nine when he was born. And one day I got a stomach bug, you know, the whole double team kind of thing. So I had to get friends to take the other kids to school. And here I am home alone with this newborn where I'm constantly running to the bathroom and he doesn't want to get put down and he wants to nurse. And it was just, when I tell you, just a crazy day. I stood up at the end of the day and said, never again will I ever be sick. I have no time for this nonsense. I don't get a sick day. I don't ever want to have to live through something like that again. I'm done. And I will tell you 18 years later, I've never been sick. Not a sniffle, not a sick day, not an allergy, nothing done, gone. I commanded my reality I, because I stood in the middle of my living room, stomping my feet. You can have a hissy fit and still manifest. I, I highly recommend hissy fits. I'll do a whole video on the wonderfulness of hissy fits because it just gets that energy out. But I was serious, never again. And that, and, and it wasn't even, I, I didn't realize it probably till two or three years later. I always joked that I must have mommy immunity because the kids would come home with all the stuff and I never got it. Not, not, nothing, nothing, totally, totally healthy. 
And I don't eat to be healthy. I don't exercise to be healthy. I don't drink water to be healthy. I just am. I am healthy. And I'm going to share something with you. And I want you to get this. Follow me here. You talk about the healthy dot. When you're on the healthy dot, there's active and passive health. And when you're on the sick dot, there's active and passive sickness. And you people think that, that there's this coin and it has sickness on one side and health on the other. And I would say in a world of duality, you're absolutely right. But I want to take you out of that world, friends. We don't need to be in that dual world anymore. Not that way, right? Because the law of gender is that there's the male energy and the female energy, which is active and passive. So I'm on the healthy dot. And the healthy dot only has active and passive health, which means there's some things that I can do to not make me healthy, but because I'm healthy, I get to express it. Like I could go run eight miles. I could go into the gym and lift hundreds of pounds. I could never have to worry about taking a sick day. And then there's passive health where I just feel good. I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting here. I feel good. And it's passive health. I get to experience passive health. Now, when we go over to the sick dot, I'm going to show you that when you're on the sick dot, you're never healthy. You just think you are because you're not actively sick, but you're passively sick. And I'm going to explain this to you because it's mind blowing. And uh, oh, Mike Drop says, I can attest to you that I've only been sick once since meeting you, which is like four or five years. Exactly. Once you adopt this, it's just a choice you make. And then you look for evidence of it. When you're on the sick dot, you know what active sickness is. You got the runny nose. You got the fever. You, you're not feeling well. You can't hold anything down. But once that active sickness goes away and you go into passive sickness, that's what most people call health. And the reason why I call it passive sickness is because you don't have symptoms. But if you talk to those people, they'll tell you they can get sick again. And some people will even tell you what months they'll get sick again because they always get sick at the same time every single year or whatever. They have a story. But when you're on the healthy dot, there's only health. You never get sick again. So if you get sick and then you get healthy, you're not healthy. It's active and passive sickness. Are you guys getting that? That's so powerful once you get this. Because when you're on the healthy dot, you never get sick. Only The healthy dot's only healthy. And it's active health and passive health. Sick dot is active, active sickness and passive sickness. Active sickness is what you would look at someone and say they're sick. Passive sickness is what most people pass off as healthy because there's a belief that you can get sickness again. Res I resonate with you. You say no. Know that you're not getting the active and passive sickness health. I'll, I'll do it one more time because it's so powerful. That See, that's a story. You say I have autoimmune and, and that's a story you're choosing. And that's what you found evidence of. Now, what I would say to you is this, that if you are dealing with some type of what you would call a sickness, you're in a sickness story, and we don't want to induce a transition because the mind doesn't, it's almost like inducing a pregnancy. If, if, you, if you don't want to wait for the pregnancy to naturally progress, you can induce it with drugs. But if it's the body's not ready, you'll end up with a C-section. So if, if you believe that you have a sickness, don't stop doing what you're doing, but you got to change internally and you got to say to yourself, I'm totally healthy. And then slowly what you'll see over time, because you keep looking for evidence of, if you keep on looking for evidence of autoimmune, you're never going to be disappointed because that's the story you're in and the mind must produce that. But if you say, I'm, I'm totally healthy. Everything I do is health and you are more healthy. Okay. You cat got it. The more that you are healthy, you'll see evidence of it. Our reticular activating center. If I said to you, go look for yellow cars, all of a sudden you're going to see yellow cars everywhere. And you're going to wonder where, why all of a sudden they're everywhere and they'll be everywhere. And this is a lot to get into in just this, this live tonight, but let me share my other story of how I changed my physical body. And it's going to kind of be mind blowing. In the sense of after I had that, my son, I went back to my midwife for my six week checkup. And at my bikini line, 
I always had like a mole and it was probably like the size of a dime. And it was always flat, never paid any close attention to it. And really never paid any attention to it unless I was going, putting a bathing suit on kind of thing. Because it was kind of in the spot where it just wasn't very obvious. And over the course of having five kids and, and having some stretch marks, um, the, the little mole that was about the size of a dime turned about that long into, and looked like a gummy worm. So by the time I went for my checkup, the midwife like almost lost her mind and saying, you got to get this checked out. This thing grew. And I looked at it and I said, no, it didn't grow. It's stretched on a stretch mark. It's normally the size of a dime. So I know it didn't grow like you're thinking that it did. It just stretched. This was my story. This was back in 2005. We went at it for a little bit. Now, I'm, I, I, I can be a very spirited person. And when she's trying to say, no, this is the story. And I'm saying, no, this is the story. It was the size of a dime. And it stretched on a stretch mark. And had I not been pregnant and had stretch marks, it would be the size of a dime. Fast forward to 2013. I'm uh, getting ready for bodybuilding. I'm shredding down. I think I probably had about eight to ten percent body fat, and I was taking some pictures before we had our official pictures taken. And I guess it's like you know, I'm just kind of going over your body, checking everything. And the the stretch the stretched mole that was about the size of the gummy worm to this that day, it's back to the size of a dime. It switched back. My mind was blown. That was like the first time I'm like, whoa, what just happened? But it had to because I would not let a dream character, the midwife, put a story into my reality that I was not going to agree to because she wanted me to go check it out to see if it could be some kind of problem. Don't even know those words anymore. So I had a choice. Do I want to accept her reality or do I want to accept my reality? Yes, I believe it's the thought that you continue to think. You will always find evidence of the reality that you're in. And who would you be if you couldn't say that anymore? Could you feel you, as yourself if you've carried this story with you? So here's another thing that I'll say I, I've, I'm do, I've done. I realized that since I just got here and I didn't give birth to any children today, I promise you that, <clears throat> the one day I was thinking like, well, why am I carrying around her stretch marks? Because she had stretch marks, she gave birth. And yes, I'm the mom and I can say I gave birth, but now I, since I didn't do it today, I can choose that I gave birth and had the pregnancy where there were no stretch marks at all. And guess what happens? They start to disappear. The, the hair that I have today is so thick and curly, but it wasn't the hair that I had growing up. My hair was that really thin, uh, angel-like blonde hair. And I always wanted thicker hair and I always wanted curly hair. So I started telling the story. I have thick curly hair, even when I didn't. I don't care what the mirror says. It's really about who do you say you are, not who were you. And again, you have 30% of a memory. Why not now, right here, right now, because that's all there is. Time doesn't exist. You think it does, but it's part of a story. I tell myself I can eat anything, but I eat and I get sick. And so I'm going through some health stories, but I'm 90 pounds. I'll get it. You will. You will. You will get it eventually. But that's why you can't tell the new story on top of the old one. We want to go to zero point. You got to pull out. Because the observer has identified with the thoughts. And if it's not happening now, and you start changing your story now, and this is why you're going to hear me say over and over again, and this is powerful. Why my programs are three months long, whether it's a mindset program, it's a nutrition program. If someone comes to me and says, I want to get on the bodybuilding stage, I, I need three months. Give me three months. But we are going to have to follow everything I say because this is, this is not only changing the body. I can't help you change your body if I can't get into your head and change your mind. Because if you're losing weight, say, to get into a dress, the second that you've gotten into the dress, you satisfy the requirement, the body will go back. That's why we don't ever want to have a point like that 
because the way the body goes, I'll allow it. Once that's done, the mind will take it back to where it was. And that's why over the course of three months, the first month is activation. We activate through repetition over and over through repetition of thought, through repetition of action, over and over. This is who I am now. This is who I am. Not who you are, not who you're going to be in this moment. I'm powerful. I'm strong. I can take you into the gym and have you, let's say if you do a deadlift and you can deadlift 135 pounds. And if I were to ask you, how long do you think it would be before you could add 50 more pounds or 70 pounds? And it's 30 seconds. I can have you lifting 50 to 100 pounds, 30 seconds, because we're not lifting with the conscious mind. We're lifting with the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is beating your heart. It's digesting your food. It's creating homeostasis. All it needs for you to do as the conscious mind is give it what it needs in order to be healthy. The first thing I do with my clients is if you bring your water intake up to 80 ounces a day to a gallon, that alone will do so much miraculous stuff within your body, but you have to do it for three months. You have to commit to the three months. Exactly. You're, 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 and you need to make one choice. And if we can get the oxygen into your body, because here's the thing I'll tell you about food, your body can only have sickness if it's in an acidic state. If we can get you slightly alkaline, through, not through water, but through food and do it through pure food that your body, we get rid of all of the um, processed stuff because your body was meant for natural. We want to bring the naturalness back. Neville Goddard talks about the naturalness. The closer we can get you back to naturalness, it doesn't mean that you'll never have those things again. But what you'll see is when we start to take the processed foods out, the mind and the body don't have to work as hard and the manifestations once again, start to flow. So if we can connect the dots, because when you start taking care of you, when you start moving, the body's meant to be moving. It's meant to be in motion. It's not meant to be sedentary. When you start to make, and it's a, a lot of changes, but we take that first month and we activate and I'm on you. I'm on you all the time. You're hearing from me all the time because I know where you've been because I've been there. The second month we start to align. Now these repetition things that we did, they become the new habits. And it's through that focused attention. It's through that funnel that we get these habits moving. So by the third month, I'm not really needed anymore because now this is who you are, not something that you do. Because if you're doing it to get something, it's going to be short-lived. Same thing with manifestation. That's why it's hit or miss, hit or miss, hit or miss. But when this becomes a natural lifestyle and your mind is convinced that not only do you want it, but this is what you feel comfortable with, it will start bringing it to you hand over foot. So when I teach lucid dreaming, if you wake up in a dream and you're finally, oh my God, it finally happened and you're so excited and you're lucid in your dream and you, you get that energy up right away, your mind's going to kick you right out. It's going to kick you right out of that dream. Do I believe it takes 21 days to build a habit? Yes and no. It depends what reality we're playing in. But what I know is this, that I know that we want it to happen in three days. I know we want it to happen in, in 72 hours, right? We don't want to take three months to do something. And it doesn't in the, the, the causality of it. But what we're doing is we're slowly separating ourselves from the old mind. And it's really not that it takes 21 days. It's about you shedding the skin of the old mind. So the only reason why there's not instant manifestation, if I say pink elephant and one doesn't show up next to me, is because there's a belief that I couldn't really, could you imagine a pink elephant showing up right now because I said pink elephant. But when you're lucid in your dreams, that's it's instant. Because there's an understanding in that reality that that can happen there. So manifestation is instant. It's just how much can you handle what actually can start to transpire in front of you. And your mind will check you by one minute your keys are here. You turn around, your keys are not there. And you're going, where did my keys go? 
And then somebody walks in the room and they're like, you can't, I can't find my keys. And they're good. They're like, it's right here. And it was right where you looked 25 times ago. If you get upset about that, you're not ready for a, a faster manifestation. So your mind is always allowing the manifestations to unfold based on what it is that you are resonating with at that time. When we start working together, crazy weird shit will happen. I don't know how else to tell you, but it's all enjoyable and it's all wonderful. And there's a saying that I have, besides you can't get it wrong, but you, you, you can't make it long. The catchphrase for manifestation should be this all the time. But of course, oh, $5,000 just fell out of the ceiling. But of course, like it should be that natural to you because when it is that natural to you and you don't get excited because if you get excited, the subconscious mind's like, mm, wait a minute, we want to keep you safe. And that's what the two minds are meant to do when they work together. But you have to be a cooperative component. And the way, the way that you can show your mind that you do this is you take care of this. You take care of this body. This is your top prize. No more is it this stuff outside of you. When you within yourself, within your shell, within your body, I mean, you get this body every day. You get to come here and you get to play with form. Have you even allowed that to sink in of how freaking amazing it is? And we give the importance to money and we give the importance to cars and we give the importance. That stuff will be added onto you so quickly. But the mind is waiting to see how you take care of this. Because when you when this is tuned, you don't miss anything in the 3D. And 3D takes a knee to you because you're taking so well care of yourself. And it's something that's a mindset that when you know that you're taking care of yourself. Back in 2009, I lost 80 pounds in seven months and one week with no trainer, no clue, other than I was going to do what I could do each day. And what I found was the more I was taking care of myself, the more I didn't tolerate any of the bullshit from people in reality that they were walking all over me because I was walking all over myself. But once I made myself top priority, it made me a better mom. It made me a better partner. It made me a better friend. It made me a better daughter. And the old reality was still trying to pull. And I'm like, nope, 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 not anymore. It sends a clear signal to the mind. Now we can activate all the other things that we've been talking about. But the reason why you don't have what you've been asking for is because your mind doesn't feel there's a certain energy within yourself when you know you're safe. Are you safe in your own imagination? When you know that you're in your stride, that you're in your flow, that you know you're unstoppable. And it's not because of the stuff out there. It's this feeling you generate it within yourself. And that's why Neville Goddard says, what would the feeling be like? So sit with me right now. What would the feeling be like if $10,000 just dropped in your lap? Don't think about it. It's not about, he didn't ask, what will you think about? What would it be like? Wouldn't it be like a, <sighs> wouldn't it be like a, oh, yes. No thoughts are needed. And if you can generate that within your body, your subconscious mind doesn't know that the money's not there, but it knows what that feeling would be like and what it should be producing for you to play with. And that's what it's, that's what, that's when that stuff shows up. Because when you're feeling, uh, you still can manifest. You don't have to be all rosy and, and, you know, skipping and, and, and joyful. I've manifested pissed off so many times. So it does, you don't have to, but the, it's not the vibration of when we talk about high, high vibration that you have to, to induce and force feeling happy. But when you're really taking care of you and you're your top priority, because you're the center dot, you're the ground zero, you're the one. So when I get to this last question and I, and it's like, okay, I'm not enjoying my present moment. How can I be living in my in my dream life while at the same time be mindful present of the moment. If I'm in a crappy situation right now, so I'll, I'll, I'll end with this because I don't want to keep us here forever and ever. I'm thrilled that you're all here. Truly thrilled. 
So today I went with one of my daughters to buy a car. And, and this is how I decide ahead of time. So I'm figuring out how much she wants to pay a month, what kind of car she wants to have. And we go to one of these places that is no haggle. It's the price is the price. And it's our second time back. We've driven some cars and we're going to get some numbers. And the, the guy helping us is like, we don't haggle here. This is the price. And I'm like, I'm not going to haggle you with the price. But I know what she's going to walk out of here paying today. And I know that she's getting a car. The question isn't, is, is she getting a car? The question is, is she getting a car from you? So just imagine me walking in as this operant power. And when it came time for the numbers, I didn't haggle the price. I haggled the percentage on the loan the loan rate. I haggled what kind of payment I wanted her to. So the price is the price. I don't care what you got to do. We'll pay that price, but here's the payment we want to pay. And what do you, and I sent them back three and four times. And I remember the last time he's like, I brought it down a whole percent and it wasn't a whole percent. It was 0.96. And I said, that's not a whole percent. That's 0.96. And he's like, oh, I'm off oh, a 0.04. And I'm like, I don't know about you, buddy, but if I go into a, a car dealership and I purchase a whole car, I want 100% of the car, not 0.96. So when you're the operant power and you know, I can go in there and it's just nice and fine and you give me the number, we're happy. But if I need to step into my role and this is what I said the done deal is going to be and this is a time frame, you're taking a knee and I'm getting what I want. And that's exactly how we left there today. That's the power that you have because this is my dream and these are my dream characters. And I sent out the script ahead of time. We want to dance. Let's dance. But I'm getting what I want. So, guys, this all comes down to you. It's about knowing who you are, not trying to fix a script that you're in. You have to pull yourself out. I, the, the meditation, the drop a light meditation that's on the, the channel already, it's so powerful. It's already full with Reiki. You have the, the water that you can add to it. Highly recommend you doing it when you have 30 minutes, when you know you're going to be uninterrupted. And if you do it and you fall asleep, you haven't messed it up. It's designed that you can either come out of the alpha state or it's designed that if you fall asleep, not to worry, it's, it's okay. But every time you wake up in the morning, just because the template looks the same from the night before, do not assume that you're in the same reality. So if you went to bed and there was $500 in your bank account, you don't know when you woke up, you could be in a $5 million reality. Leave the old story alone. Your reality that you're in will come and get you. And before I go to bed at night, you better believe, just like I pre-programmed what was going to happen at the car dealership today, I pre-programmed what my day is going to be like tomorrow. And how it unfolds is what the joy is for me. Because it would it'd be no fun if I knew all the script all the time. I came here for the ride. I came here for the joy. And how I know my reality will come to me, that I don't have to do it. I could just sit on my bed. And whoever needs me, if the dogs need to go out, they come and they get me and I go and I let them out. So when you understand that you're the operant power, you don't need to go to it. I'm going to teach you to make you come here, to it come to you, but you have to be okay with stillness. You have to be okay to be stubborn with stillness. And that when the reality presents itself, it's if it's not the reality that you asked for, I made them go back four times today. And not once did they ask me to leave. And I said to my daughter ahead of time, it's going to get rough in there. It's, and, you, and you can't say a word. You cannot break the tension. I am going to create the tension. If that's what we have to do, you got to let me create the tension. Everybody will be shaking hands when we're done. And that's exactly what happened. But as an interrogator, as an investigator, as a powerful manifester, I always get what I want. And I want you to win. I want you to win big. And I want you to win big all the time. So if you're in the Facebook group, I have a message on Messenger that my daughter sent explaining to uh, some friends of mine what exactly transpired. And it was rough. And it was funny to hear her perspective of it. But when you're the operant power and you know, I know that this is exactly it. This is your dream. Don't believe that it's a real reality. It's much of a dream as your dream that you're going to go into tonight. 
And I just have this theory we bounce around from dream to dream. It's just this one looks very similar all the time. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for staying here. I appreciate you. Let me just go over one more time. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Invite all your manifesting friends. We have a, fa a Facebook group, but that's fading out. We're starting a new group. The sign up, as soon as you sign up, you'll get instant access to it. There's a free course on how to create foundational assumptions. Highly recommend. I don't know, Kat, if you want to say something real quick in the comments. I know you're in there. You've been playing around with it. What, it, what, what it's like for you. That would be wonderful. We also have paid digital courses. I have one-off coaching sessions, and I also have three-month programs. Just imagine you and I crossing your finish line three months from now. How different do you want your life to be? If you ever have any questions, any suggestions, please send me your comments. I'll include them in the lives. We're going to meet here next Wednesday. It seems to be a great meeting place. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything and helping the channel grow. It's exactly how I expect it to be, to be plus more, because I always get what I want plus more. There's a fi fine, fine, fine foundational assumption. Another one is I'm the star of my reality. And uh, thank you, Schroeder, mic drop, voice coaching. Guys, if you need anything, voice coaching, singing, musical, you go to my, my mic drop, voice coaching friend, Schroeder. Again, the, the uh, meditation video and the majority of the music on the YouTube channel has been composed by Schroeder just for the Invincible CEO. He did it just for us. You can't find it else anywhere. Thank you guys again from the bottom of my heart. Appreciate you deeply. I want to see you win and win big. And please feel free at any time to share all of your wonderful manifestations anywhere in, in, our, in, in our universe. Talk to you soon. Have a great night.